Well, good morning. Uh, I, we've met about everybody in here. I'm RJ, and this is my wife, Mary Ellen. Our last name is Tippin. Uh, we uh, we're glad you all came. Um, there may be some more come in. We're going to kind of divide this morning up into three different s- segments. Um, first segment, we're going to kind of inter- introduce the video that's coming up. Um, explain maybe what kind of what you're going to see, uh, maybe define or question a couple of things on the video. Um, after, uh, after this time and after the video, we'll split up into men and women. We're going to do the Mennonite session this morning. Uh, and uh, uh, we're going to talk about the roles of marriage. And I think I suggested uh, to my submissive wife that uh, Thank we you. <laughs> <laughs> that we uh, that we do this because I think uh, we as men uh, like to talk about some of those things without our wives around. So we're going to do that, and then we'll give you a chance as couples to uh, get back together and process a couple of questions together as well. Um, let's start with a word of prayer, shall we? Father, we uh, thank you for. Uh, this opportunity to get together, reflect on your word. Um, you are the giver of absolute truth, and um, you know what works and uh, what doesn't work. And uh, so we we hope to discover uh, and be reminded of things that we've learned in the past and uh, need to apply in our daily lives to represent you well in our marriages and in all of the relationships that you put us in. Uh, So thank you for this time, for the willingness of those who are here uh, to uh, learn and participate and uh, ask for wisdom as we represent your word today in Jesus' name. Amen. Do they have this paper? Yeah, you all all have access to one of these papers? Laurel, did you get one? Where are they? Okay. Yeah, we'll grab them there. On this board to the left, uh, we just got out of the apologetics class, uh, and one of the verses that Dave referred to was Hebrews 11.6, and, and it, is, it is so critical that we can read it. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to God must believe that He exists and that He is a rewarder of them who seek Him. Some translations say diligently seek Him. And the principles that we're going to talk about today, uh, marriage itself doesn't make sense without without, um, a worldview that includes God. And um, so so if you really want your marriage to work, you really have to figure out what God uh, God wants and what his principles are. And and it takes faith to do that because uh, our, our natural... Inclination is to not do what God wants us to do. It's to do what our sinful nature wants us to do. So, uh, so, um, so we wrote down on our papers here, God designed different responsibilities for men and women in marriage. Note who the designer is, and that's what we're referring to here. The designer is God. He's, he's the perfect creator, and he's to be trusted. He is the perfect moral giver, and there are absolute... Uh, there are, are, are absolute laws that we can depend upon and, uh, and live by. So uh, this is where question, where do we get our ideas of marriage? Uh, if, if, we didn't, if we didn't have the Bible, where, where would you say you've gotten your ideas of marriage? Uh, our, parents. our parents, yeah. We were, we were talking about this, and, and I think we said we learned more how we didn't want to do it than the way parents. we wanted to do it from our parents. <laughs> We both said, we can, we need to do it better than that. (laughs) Just true. Uh, At least we saw things we wanted to do differently anyway. So, and sometimes that's the best teacher is to figure out how not to do something. And uh, so, yeah, other, other thought, how else? Just in general, in the culture, how would you say people get their ideas about marriage? The media. media, Okay. Yeah. Entertainment. Movies, yeah. School and community. Yeah. 
your peers. Your peers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that has a huge influence too. Mm -hmm. And where would be the best place to get them? We've referred to that already. Whose judgment do we trust? Hopefully we trust a, a God who created us and, and knows how to do things. Uh, though the responsibilities are different, men and women are still equal in value. That's a concept that we've talked about in the past. The video we'll talk about today as well. Um, it's when we're using language, whether it's English or any other language, you, you wrestle with the semantics of things and the meanings of things. And it's sometimes difficult in our world to, uh, uh, to understand that there are responsibilities that different people have, but yet they are equal in value. And that's what we want to kind of talk about today. I was thinking of it in terms of kids, because we've got five kids. And the kids are all different, so totally different. But do I value one more than another just because they're different? No, I don't. I mean, I love them all, but they're totally different. So mm -hmm. it's kind of has that same sort of feeling of uh, equal but different. Yeah. Uh, oh, Laura was the favorite child, but <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Since she's here. <laughs> she was our favorite middle child. She was our favorite middle child. <laughs> uh, God, okay, part of these responsibilities, God says in the scripture, God calls a man to sacrificially love and lead their wives. Now, um, I'm a great example of how not to do it. I'm not perfect, and uh, we've been married for, what's nine from six? Three, <laughs> 43 years, and, uh, and you know, you, you always have this perception that you, you'll get older and you'll get wiser and you, you'll get perfect at it. And there's not a week that goes by that uh, I'm sure when Mary Ellen hears something come out of my mouth, she probably thinks, where did that come from? And what do I do with that? And I think the same thing. I go, where does the, what does God expect me to do with that statement that I just heard? And, um, and so it's, it's a struggle. And... Um, but yet it is doable um, within God's principles. And, uh, okay. Then God calls women to respect and support their husbands. And I'll read that scripture there. Wives, understand and support your husbands in ways that show your support for Christ. Husbands, go all out in your love for your wives, exactly as Christ did for the church. This is a huge mystery, and that's taken from the message. So that's a, a pretty big rewording of the thing, but it really gets the point across. Mm -hmm. So the title, Love Dances, good dancing requires that each person knows his or her roles and plays it well. And I don't know much about dancing, even <laughs> though I wanted to be a dancer growing up, but we didn't even dance in my high school, at public high school, because it was such a religious community that you just didn't dance. But I, I always wanted to be a dancer. I'd watch dancers on TV and think, oh, that's what I want to be. We took dancing lessons. We did. We took, yeah. And then we went somewhere and danced. All I did was count the whole time. One, two, three, and four, five, and six. It wasn't very, very, very romantic, smooth right? or romantic. Yeah. <laughs> but Laurel and her husband are awesome. What do you call that? Country, what is it kind of dancing? Like Western. Western, but they are amazing together. But anyway, I would have liked to have been that, but we weren't. Our day did square dancing in, in 4-H. Mm -hmm. But uh, so then, then it talks about, and you'll see on the video, it's uh, finding the perfect spouse. So I was thinking of a little story about that, and I thought um, we had a very court, uh, short courtship. So anyway, and this was like a day before we were going to get married. I think I was crying, saying, you don't want to marry. And RJ's looking at me like, you idiot, of course I want to marry you. I didn't go to all this trouble for nothing. <laughs> he didn't say it like that. But, uh, but anyway, but I do remember. So I, I kind of, and I'm kind of a skeptical person, and so I have lots of doubts about things. So I naturally had doubts. But I do remember, this is absolutely true, that when we were standing in the back of the church, I'm standing in the back of the church with my dad, ready to walk down the aisle, and I remember saying, this is it. No more doubts. No more questioning. This is God's will for me. I am saying yes, and I am not going to question it anymore. And that, I, I don't know, God must have planted that in my heart. But anyway, it was a very good thing for me because a doubter like me, and I said, no, I'm not going to doubt that. This is God's will for me to stay with RJ and be his wife. 
So that was kind of, so perfect spouse for me, not perfect in actions and every other way like that, but perfect because I had made a vow and a commitment to God. So. Role confusion. Well, we've uh, talked about this a little bit. Culture has created a gender blender, and they refer to this in the video, when it comes to roles and responsibilities of a marital relationship. Um, someone has, has to take the lead in a relationship, and that, that goes in any kind of relationship. I mean, you all work at different places. Uh, whenever you're involved with, our, with people, somebody has to take a leadership role. That doesn't mean that person is any more qualified or deserves that position. Uh, it's just what is needed in order to get things done uh, in, a, in, a, in, a good, in a good way. Uh, you want to talk about the 50-50? Uh, many couples begin marriage, and this is all, we have a little book from Family Life that goes along with the art of marriage, and it talks about the 50-50 approach to relationships. And then they gave us four reasons the 50-50 plan is destined to fail. These also apply. And then as I was going through my thought, it's the very same thing that the, re the reason that living together before your marriage doesn't work because of these very exact same reasons. It doesn't involve commitment. It doesn't involve commitment. Acceptance is based on performance. Giving affection is based on merit. Motivation is based uh, for action is based on feelings. Rejection is based on focusing on the other person's weakness, basically. Um, so I thought those were just really good things to consider. That's why we put that in there. And then at the bottom, Family Life uh, has what's called the Family Manifesto. And if you are interested in looking it up, I gave you the information. But it just has really biblical bases for uh, husband-wife relationship, children. Just, you know, if you want to kind of make a manifesto for your family, you can go there and say, yes, this is what, this is what we believe as a family. Okay. Ready to watch the video? Uh, I think so. The, I would like to point out one thing. One of the topics in this video is talking about submission. And uh, I know in the guy's handout that, that we're going to go through, I put together a number of verses. I just did a search, uh, a Bible search on submission. And there's a lot of submitting going on in Scripture. And uh, I would encourage you wives not to feel so picked on uh, through this video. Because, I mean, the Scripture does say, wives, submit yourselves to your husbands. Now, the, the, the interpretation of that um, um, needs to be carefully um, considered because um, there's, it also re, there's a lot, we're supposed to submit ourselves as Christians one to another. Um, we're sub supposed to submit to those in authority, um, to our governing authorities. There's lots of submitting that's going on that Scripture has, talks about, and it's a principle that works. Um, and those... Uh, the other thing I, that we will talk about as men, and maybe you will as, as women as well, uh, wives, sure, they're supposed to submit to their husbands, but we as husbands need to figure out a way to make it easy, uh, easier for our wives to be submissive to us. So there's a creative way to do that. Um, there's a verse uh, in Galatians talks about do not... Um, do not, um, let's see, your children to wrath. Provoke. Do not provoke your children to wrath. Um, it's the same way with, with your wife. Do not provoke your wives to wrath. I mean, if you want them to submit to you, you need to be a loving leader that, now, we don't deserve our position of leadership. Um, none of us do. But it's a, leader, it's, it's a leadership position that God wants us to be in. So when you, when you listen to the stuff going on in the video, you know, process the submission stuff in light of, of what God wants you to do, and because and, ultimately we're we're to be obedient and submissive to God. So, I think one of the examples that they use is is a little challenging. I think the woman's response uh, in talking about how she was being submissive to her husband uh, could be left open for some good discussion. I think we'll talk <laughs> about it as the men uh, as well. But uh, okay, so we'll see if we can get the video going. <laughs> 